Can I help you? Got the twenty. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another twenty real tomorrow. How could anyone forget asshole? Take it easy on him. Deep down, he really hates being the guy who has to remind you. This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. A vague sense of disappointment fills you. The glass shimmers as if taunting you with its secrets. You get the feeling this room would tell you something crucial if you only knew how to listen. I'm not exactly sure either, to be honest. My imagination has a way of failing me. It's a weakness. This window is pristine on the inside. Golden light melts away into the blue, glassy darkness of your mind. In it are two neon-lit shapes, a man and a woman on the single bed. Like the witness said, the man is kneeling, the woman is on her back. It's the night of March 4th and a shot has just been fired. The man looks directly at the woman. The shot's possible directions converge in his mouth, a ray cast from somewhere outside, entering his brain. From the roof outside, location A prime, the glass fractures around the bullet hole. Shards face inwards like a corona behind the woman's back. The man does not know the bullet has entered his brain. He never will. Death comes faster than the realization. The ray cast from the man's mouth unravels into a fan of possible directions, all on the roof at first. The shot could have come from any of them. This is composite location A prime, most likely of the origin points. There could have been. Then the rain and slush and wind washed it away. This was more than a week ago. 72% with an antique weapon that fires military grade ammunition. A Belma grave rifle, for example. This is a good short distance, but not too short. The perpetrator aimed with their back against the railing, or possibly kneeling for precision. This would explain why it only took them one shot. The lights were on in here. Outside it was dark. It was like shooting fish in an aquarium. A well-lit aquarium. The victim opened his mouth to let the bullet in. Neither of them would have seen anything outside in the darkness. Too busy with their own bodies. Point X would contradict the woman's testimony, rendering the entire proposition void. These figures would be wiped out, detective. None that you've found thus far, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. That's a 28%, yes. In this model, the shot could have come from a greater distance. Nothing excludes the possibility 
Should we extrapolate to include every possible point of origin in Martinez? According to your map of the district, this shot could have come from a wide angle of locations, starting with the northern edge of the abandoned boardwalk, ending with an islet in the bay. Let's call them B prime. B prime for boardwalk, B double prime for land's end, and B triple prime for the islet detective. There may be smaller points in between, but those are too fine to zoom in on. 700 meters away, the likeliest of these B positions, 20% chance. A skilled sniper could have made the shot, provided he had a safe sniper's nest. Even with the light on inside, we're talking military training. At that distance, the perpetrator would have had to take wind direction into account. 1.2 kilometers away, the least likely of these positions, let's say 3%. A truly skilled sniper could have done it, possibly from a tent. No, too far-fetched. One kilometer away, a point beyond the docks, on an islet in the bay. The fort is ruined, but the perpetrator may have found a stable spot on the beaches surrounding it, where the concrete crumbles into the sea, as you saw in the coin-operated viewer. The shot would have been a small miracle, 5% likelihood. There is an extremely narrow field of view from the bay to the window between Rue de saint Gislain 10 and 33A. The angle would have been extreme and access to the islets is questionable. From where, precisely? I see you have given this a lot of thought. Are those the locations you've singled out in addition to the roof? And what is the likelihood, in your opinion, that it came from a further distance? Okay, well, we should see if there is gunshot residue or sniper nest if we go down the coast. Rule these spots out one by one. It would be the diligent thing to do. Until then, personally, I'm going with the roof version. It fits the hidden path through the whirling. A simple hypothesis. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face, adorned with the expression. A mirror hangs on the bathroom A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. The chain cutters slip out of your hands as you attempt to twist the faucet into place. Well, you know one thing for sure. You've probably never been a plumber. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. The 
The bed is still cold from the broken window, and not too inviting, but it's yours. You've earned it. It's not easy, but your bones are so tired from what feel like weeks of work on the case. You have to try. After what feels like hours, you feel you might be sleeping. Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you. Forever on Ferrate. On and on it goes, for untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising, rising, above the dark curvature, the great wingspan of sleep. Studied with stars. Behold, there are millions of them down there. The first time. The last time. The smoke in our mouth. The plotted flowers. The faces turning, changing. It's the world, Harry boy. And you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. You can never forget this shit. All stuck on loop. Whirling, spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again. Harrister. A ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspapers. Collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsakes. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. It's too late. You're not made of nothing anymore. You're something now, Harry. I tried to drown you in the black water, but you re-emerged. Kicking and screaming. Running. And for what? For the working class. For the money, baby. For the greater good. For Revacon. Always and only Revacon. Solving your little crossword puzzles. Doing your tasks. Crossing names off lists. Trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. He's got no idea what he's in for. It's ringing, Harry. The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. Do it for the picture puzzle. Put it all together. Solve the world. One conversation at a time.
You were right, Rosa. Back there, in your sleep, all the weak-willed delinquents, dilly-dalliers, foreign moneylenders, insane anarchists, and yes, the woe-men. They've run this place to ruin. The game was rigged from before you even knew how the pieces move, soldier. No, brother. Forget about your gut. We've got much more pressing matters to focus on. It's time to turn back time. I will send you back to the time when the sun had not yet vanished, when it was still setting into the sea. The time of the suzerain, the time when love was still possible. To go back with the knowledge and the experience you now have, and to do it all over. Do it richtig this time. Protect the suzerainty, clean up the city, revive disco music, and get her back. You could save Revachon. You could be the man, brother. Second chances are not about questions. They are about actions. Are you ready to start taking action, brother? There must be others like you. Men who long for the days when words like loyalty and love meant something. People whose yearning for the past is so great they barely live in the present. Those are the men you need to find. Those are the guys who know. Think. Maybe you've already met someone like that. Now we're making bank. A man with guts and a memory. I felt it too. He could be a treasure trove of wisdom. Who else? No, not her. She's a woman. Anyone else? Bullseye. And that's the vibe we're looking for. Those are the people with answers. Now, there is a man who values the past with passion. And you know how the saying goes. He who clings to the past shapes the future. Measurehead is exactly the kind of man who'd know how to step back into the past. Okay, don't worry. That's what your gut is for, feeling these things out. Let me be your eyes, and when I know for sure someone's got that special something, I'll tip you off. Three to four traditionalists should do it. No need to go crazy with those guys. History will remember us, and this time we don't have to worry about her being kind. Prateria Redia Kingsman. Charge for Revacol. Charge for love.
Hello, officer. What brings you up here again? Ah, yes. The night before I saw you in the hallway and reminded you you're a police officer. Wow, Elysium, you don't hear that term often. There was the usual ruckus, loud disco music. I can't say, probably not. Sounded like you were flying solo. Oh yes. Various artists, ostentatious orchestrations prime among them. Oh, that? Yeah. Whoa. The less said about OO, oh, oh, the better. OO oh, were huge where I come from. I was very young then, of course, like seven. Life gets hard, but we go on. It would appear so. At around two o'clock, the disco stopped and there was a change of pace. A slow, sad song started playing, like organ music on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Some of that time you were yelling along to it. Yes, there was a church in there. A really small church, like the smallest, saddest church in the whole world. It was about that. And also, that it doesn't matter anymore and that we're alone now. It was difficult to tell. The song itself was very quiet and soft, but you sounded like a wounded boar, sir. It was hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. Yes, it was very cool. Then you started screaming and trashed the place. No, it didn't sound like there was a fight. It sounded like someone was trashing their room. A window was smashed, the tape player probably, the song stopped, and furniture too. A real destructathon. There was screaming. Then I think you passed out. There was. I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable. I went out afterwards. Everything was quiet by then. Around four or five. And that was it. No problem, sir. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Who? What? Dear God, you've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She's smoke and mirrors and willow wisps. She probably didn't give you her real name either. Why would she? Arrest her immediately, before she further entangles you in her web of lies. 
What? Her hand trembles. She's only pretending she didn't hear you say, Devil Woman. I did. What is this? I called your desk or whatever it is. The numbers are all over town. Call 8102 for emergencies. There was an older woman on the other end. It sounded like she was smoking. She took my complaint. She coughed. That is the emergency's desk number. Anyone could know that, sire, by looking around and calling the desk. I don't believe a single word she says. I can give you the time, too. It was late. After midnight. 12.20. I know I have not been 100% truthful with you, but I am now. You sense a little hesitation there, or maybe even fear. The stress was on the wrong syllable. Welcome to the Wake Up Club, brother. Okay. Okay, it's not. You log your work every week. It's all transmitted to Common, sir. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name. So I lied. Like I lied before. Like I did at LCSB. I have to lie all the time. I'm so tired of it. No. It's submerged in a plastic boy on the coast, in the reeds. It just doesn't say Clausia Amandu. It says Anuk Mea Smit. A fake passport and visa, given to me by my employer. I can't even use them. My employer probably leaked the name to hurt me. I didn't show up to a rendezvous. They don't take that lightly. I didn't show up because I was afraid they'd do something to me. The job was finished. I'm just a liability now. She fears an arrest right here and now. This has been an awful turn of events for her. West of the boardwalk, in the reeds, on the coast there. I put it there when I first arrived. Haven't been there since. It's useless. You're welcome to it. It's in the reeds northwest of here, past a broken sewage pipe, right near the water line. It's Katarzyna Alazie. It's a grad name. Jim's or Yugo grad in origin. Not occidental at all. Smells of motor oil, tiger, economic desolation, and rock music infused alcoholism. My parents were Zemsk immigrants, but I'm nationalized Oranese. All I remember is Oranie. Alasie is my father's name. That's cool. She doesn't feel like a classier. She feels like nothing. I am. They can never take my sash and my scepter from me. Yes, they can. For lying. She nods, her back straight, ready for whatever is next. You almost say the words, then stop. The lieutenant is off somewhere, 28 kilometers from here, probably reading the manual for incarceration, the one he knows how to use. Come back and say this with Kim here. You can't handle it without him. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath. 
as if in the presence of some tiger. You are. This is not the end of this.